Metrics Network. I'm John Templon for Basketball Prospectus, and we're going to talk more about what last week Drew Cannon introduced you to, which are APVR, or Tempo Free Metrics. And we're going to dive into one specifically of the four factors, which is free throw rate. Uh, why is free throw rate important? Well, typically, it's actually not that important. It's actually the least important of the four factors, um, but also one of the easiest to understand because it's a very simple calculation. All you have to do is divide free throw attempts by field goal attempts, and then you get free throw rate. So yeah, really simple, and it's really easy to understand because teams score points by getting to the free throw line, and getting other teams in foul trouble is really important. And so it's a vital strategy when you're playing basketball, especially in college basketball. And you know people get really upset about officiating, but it always comes down to free throw rate and how aggressive a team is, and well, if officials influence it a little bit, you know, free throw rate is very important. And so one of the big examples you're about to see is actually in when the NBA Finals kick off tonight. So when the NBA Finals kick off tonight on ABC, the top two teams in the NBA free throw rate are going to be on display. Oklahoma City is number one at 32.9% uh, and of their field goal or of their free throws were 52 or 32.9% of their field goal attempts. And they were the third best team at home and the best on the road in terms of free throw rate. And then Miami is number two in the league. They're at 31.9%, and they were the best at home and sixth best on the road. So obviously free throws are going to play a really important part of this series. And six of the top 50 players in the NBA, according to free throw rate, are in the series as well. And that includes James Harden, who is number six, Joel Anthony, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Kendrick Perkins, and Dwayne Wade. Um... You might be surprised that James is only number 20 on the list and Durant's number 31 because they take a lot of free throws. In fact, LeBron led the league, in, led the NBA in free throw attempts this season with 690, and Durant is second. But, you know, their free throw rates don't always lead the league because it's divided by field goal attempts, and because those guys are superstars, they're both attempting a ton of field goals as well. So their free throw rates end up not being quite as high. Um, they're still really high, and they're really important, obviously, but you know, they take a little bit off of it. So that's where free throw rate can be important because if there's a player like Joel Anthony or like Kendrick Perkins who doesn't shoot as much but gets to the free throw line a lot, that's a really effective weapon. And I think, you know, James Harden is a really good example of this. He's a natural slasher who gets to the basket a lot and causes a lot of problems for the defense. And obviously, you know, he takes a lot of free throws, uh, as you can see by him being number six in the league in free throw rate. So, yeah, that's definitely something to watch out for tonight in the NBA. And then in the college game, free throw rate can have an even higher impact. And that's a lot of the reason is because you can attempt a lot more free throws. So New Mexico State uh, attempted 51.9% of their free throw attempts, or of their total field goal attempts in free throw attempts. And that's, so that's 19% more than the Heat, who, or than, the, uh, than Oklahoma City, which led the NBA. So that's a big difference, and it's part of the reason why New Mexico State made the NCAA AA tournament this year. And the next two top teams in free throw offensive free throw rate in the NCAA, LIU Brooklyn and UNC Asheville, also both made the NCAA tournament. So this is a really important thing. Uh, high offensive rates are usually caused in the college game by aggressively going to the basket and just being bigger than your opponents. Uh, LIU Brooklyn definitely has the biggest front line in the NEC. They go to the free throw line a lot because they're a dribble drive offense, and you see that reflected in their statistics. Uh, this isn't the panacea of everything. As we said, it's not the be-all, end-all in terms of importance, and Maryland was the BCS conference leader at 46.6% last year, but obviously the Terrapins didn't go very far. So it's not a perfect metric, but it definitely can tell you things about how a team is doing. Uh, and then in terms of leaders in defensive free throw rate at the college game, well, you'll see teams that you'd expect that have strong interior defense, like North Carolina, uh, which was number one overall last year, Connecticut, and Kentucky, who was number eight with Anthony Davis. Uh, the other way you could have really good free throw rate in, on defense is to be less aggressive on the perimeter. So if a team like Mississippi State doesn't force many turnovers, but has a strong inside presence, it's going to have a low free throw rate, but teams are probably going to get open shots against them. And only five teams in the top 50 in free throw rate defense were in the top 100 in turnover percentage last year. And those teams are 
uh, teams like Cincinnati, Missouri, Long Beach State, Iona, and Ohio State. So that's a really effective defensive strategy if you can pull it off, but it's also really hard to do. And the other option is to just not foul. So LIU Brooklyn, uh, again, appears on this list. They were number two. And Jim Ferry hates fouling. He doesn't, that doesn't mean that you're good at defense. It just means you don't like to foul. And, you know, the Blackbirds had an adjusted defensive efficiency or how many points you allow per 100 possessions of 107.5, which ranked 275th nationally. So they weren't good at defense. They just were good at not fouling. And the same deal with Marist, another team that was good at not fouling. They ranked 11th in the nation in defensive free throw rate, but they ranked 239th in defensive efficiency. So there are obviously some problems there. Uh, in terms of individuals, uh, the national leader in the NCAA last year in free throw rate was Javante Brooks. He was a freshman at Dartmouth. Unless you're a really big Ivy League fan, you probably haven't heard of him. And But some guys you might have heard of that were in the top 10 include Ronald Noren, uh, Robert Sacre and Arsalan Kazimi. So those guys from Butler, Gonzaga, and Rice, respectively, all had an ability to get to the line. Um, here you see, with Norad especially, the fact that if you don't take too many field goals, which Norad seems kind of scared to shoot the ball sometimes last season, that if you then you can also have a high free throw rate. Because obviously Norad was driving as a point guard, and since he didn't take too many field goals on the floor, he ended up with a high free throw rate this season. Uh, another way to get a high free throw rate, like Sacre and Kazimi kind of show, is just be bigger or more athletic than the people here that are guarding you. Uh, another unsurprising one in the list is Jeff Withy, who was number 17, uh, the big Kansas center. And then Mick Cabongo, the uh, freshman from Texas, was number 19, so the point guard. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways to have a high free throw rate, but, you know, it's a very valuable tool in a team's arsenal, and it's also an interesting part of the four factors. So, for... Basketball Prospectus and the Sabermetrics Network. I'm John Templon, and thanks for watching.